Hey, I'm Aki Ramon, and you're watching Loudwire. Hey everyone, Gurhamid here for Loudwire, here with Marky Ramon, obviously a member of the legendary Ramones and author of Punk Rock Blitzkrieg, My Life as a Ramon. Awesome book, I could not uh, say enough about it really. Thank you. Uh, so, this is Wikipedia Fact or Fiction. We're going to clear up some rumors that are on Wikipedia, which I know that you like to do. Uh, it says, in late 1972, following the death of New York Dolls original drummer uh, Billy Mercia, Mercia yeah. uh, you auditioned as a replacement for the band, and you were the only one that they seriously considered besides Jerry Nolan, who got the gig. Yes. yes. That's fact. Okay. That, uh, that happened uh, as clear as day. We were the only two there, and uh, here I am, just coming off a heavy metal band, Dust, doing all these triplets, quadruples, double stroke rolls, nine stroke rolls, crossovers, different time changes, and I'm showing off, uh, which I shouldn't have done. I should have just stuck to the beat, like, uh, Benny oh, okay. ben like Benny Benjamin does yeah. on the Motown hits. But here was Jerry Nolan playing it straight, the way it should have been, and that's why he got it. Yeah, very good band, very underrated band. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, you're a drummer for Wayne County and the Backstreet Boys, again, the original yes. Backstreet Boys. Uh, and it says that Wayne was, at the time, rock's first transsexual singer. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Wow, nobody Definitely. before him at all. That without a doubt, he uh, have to admit she had a lot of balls. <laughs> you know, uh, back then, forty years ago, uh, people people weren't coming out of the closet. Yeah, a lot of people weren't accepting of that at no, your shows. They weren't. They weren't. They were. They were very. In fact, they were very violent towards it. Yeah. You know, uh, and a lot, there were a lot of laws where so you you could have gotten arrested. So oh, things have changed since then. And then boy Thank George you. came along. Now it's all good. Now it's all good, right? Definitely. Uh, I Want to Be Sedated, the first song you recorded with the Ramones. Uh, it says that it was written by Joey while he was in the hospital being treated for burns on his face and his throat. He got burnt by a humidifier. Right. Uh, inhaler uh, to clear his nostrils and his... Uh, his breathing passages mm -hmm. it exploded so uh, that that was uh, that's where sedated came from really and did he actually write it in the hospital I, I'm not sure not sure I okay no I, I, I didn't get that far in, into where each song was written okay gotcha I mean that but that was the reason Wow yeah uh, that must have hurt <laughs> but because gotcha. you see pictures afterwards and you can see his skins melted away. So the famous story is during end of the century, Phil Spector uh, would, well, did uh, force Johnny Ramone to play one chord over and over and over at gunpoint. That's bullshit. That's fiction. Uh, he never pointed a gun at us. The reason why he wanted Johnny to do the chord over and over and over again was to get a certain sustain, which he wasn't getting on his guitar and Johnny only played Mo's rights. Hmm. So he kept insisting, play this, play that. No, I'm only gonna play on Mo's right. So whose fault was it really? It was basically it was John's fault. But the thing was, you remember Hard Day's Night, that first chord? Oh yeah, big chord. Okay. Big, big chord. So Phil was kinda going after something like that, you know. Okay. Yeah. But he wanted it to have that sustain which means that it lasts, yeah. you know, and uh, it wasn't. And he chose one that was better than the others eventually. Okay. So to do it 40, 50, 60 times, so what? You're hitting a chord, but they just didn't get along. Sure. And it also said that during those recording sessions, he would make you hit one note on the drum for hours at a time. No, no. No? Fiction? No, that's bullshit. All right, more bullshit. Uh, he suggested a few songs, I put a towel over the drum head, just so mm. I would stop a certain ring that was bouncing off the studio walls, which, which I did. I listened to him, and, and uh, it went perfectly with the song. 
Cool. All right. Um, during the end of the century recording sessions, uh, it says that Spectre uh, took Joey Ramone away for a three-hour private meeting somewhere in his mansion, which the album was being recorded in. Uh, Dee Dee went out looking for him, found Phil at the top of the staircase, shouting and waving a pistol and pointing the gun at Dee Dee's heart. <laughs> oh, boy, stories. It's incredible. This album. They, they, get, they get funnier and funnier. Um, the um, story was Phil was just trying to be uh, you know, face to face with Joey about certain, uh, Baby I Love You. Yeah. Which was uh, uh, originally done by uh, the Ronettes, which uh, Phil produced in 62 or 63, I think it was. So we were going to put that on the album. He was just coaching them over the vocals. Mm -hmm. Didi, was, Didi was my best friend in the band. He was my partner in crime. I loved him. We loved each other. But he was a big exaggerator. Uh, in his book, he claims he killed a, uh, a guard a, a uh, not a crossing guard, uh, a guard where you go <laughs> a to the prison country, guard. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, where you go from one country to another. Customs. Yeah, customs guard. Okay. Now, if you kill a customs guard, you're not going to be able to go through that country <laughs> or come back to the country. You're going to jail, so that didn't happen. <laughs> Dee Dee had a very childlike, vivid imagination, so that's why he was such a great songwriter. Yeah. So a lot of these stories. Just they just grow and grow. That never happened. I love Dee Dee. I really yeah, do. Sure. Me too. Uh, during those uh, end of the century recording sessions, uh, Dee Dee claimed to have left the sessions without recording uh, anything on bass whatsoever. He, was, uh, he, always, he played bass and everything. He did play. Okay. <laughs> played bass and everything. <laughs> All right. Moving onward. Of course, there's a lot of speculation that uh, revolves around the, the KKK took my baby away. I know what that was about. Well, well, this is what Wikipedia says okay. about. Uh, you know, they say that uh, rumors are that it was about Johnny stealing Joey's girlfriend. No. And nope. And uh, but it also said in another part that the song was actually written sometime before Joey had found out about the the relationship. But then it says, and this is in quote, "The truth remains unknown." No. That truth, nobody knows what it's truth about. Truth was. He was in an institution for a while. Joey? Yeah, he was in an institution. Was it for his OCD? Uh, I, I don't know what it was. It was, it was a mental thing. Okay. So he knew a black girl who, who was next to him, you know, and they got along very well. Yeah. They liked each other a lot. So uh, a few days later, she was gone. And it, it flipped him out, it freaked him out because he he, was, he became really close and good friends with her. So he cleverly, humor, I mean, nothing's funny about the KKK, but he used that in, in that song. It says Dee Dee left the band as you began recording Brain Drain, so the bass parts were performed by Daniel Ray and Andy Chernoff of the Dictators. Bullshit. No, no, no. no. Dee Dee was in the studio. And if anybody had to do any overdubbing of Dee Dee's part, it would have been Daniel Ray. Okay. It would have been Daniel Ray. I was there. He was right. We were we were in the studio. My friend, my friend would pick him up, and bring him to the studio with me in the car. So you know. He, I'd say that's a good source. I mean, it's like. He was he was Dee Dee. He played the bass. <laughs> uh. Uh, it says, in 1997, uh, during an appearance on the Howard Stern Show, you and a Joey got into an on-air fight about your respective drinking habits. Drinking in 97? That's what it said. That I was drinking at that? Well, him. Well, it just says that you got into a fight about your respective drinking habits. I don't, I don't know what know, they mean by that. that. You were sober by then, obviously. Yeah, I was sober in 84. <laughs> So, yeah, it's oh, been a good 13 the, years. The problem was Joey, Joey was drinking yeah. when I got back in the group, and he was doing uh, cocaine. It's a fact. And uh, he really wasn't a, dura a durable human being to, to withstand all that 
you know, the chemicals and the alcohol. So, uh, you know, knowing the experience that I had, I tried to help him. You can't, you can't help anybody unless they want it themselves. So I would always say to him, Joey, why don't you come with me to AA? You might like it. It might, uh, you know, get, might help you, whatever, you know. Whatever, whatever can, can help you, you know, get sober is fine with me. Oh, okay, I'll go once when I'm sick and tired of hearing about it. It's all preaching bullshit and this and that and da 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 da. And then he would say to me, Yeah, you're just a dry drunk. And, you know, he didn't know what he was talking about because he never experienced going to AA or NA or any of these places. So I think because he was drinking and I wasn't, he didn't want people to think he had the problem. So he switched oh. it around and made it like, you know, you're the one who had the drinking problem. You, you know, you're the one who had to stop. Uh, don't put this shit on me, you know what I mean? Oh, okay. But the thing was that he did stop and he started taking Prozac. <laughs> and uh, the funny thing was, even though Johnny and Joey didn't talk for, for decades, one day we're in the van. Joey goes to John, so, uh, you know, I think, how the Yankees doing? So John turns around and looks at him and knows that it's the Prozac talking. Yeah. That it's not really, uh, you know, uh, from, from Joey's heart. So Joey started taking Prozac. And then, uh, you know, uh, he started getting into psych drugs. And, ah. and in some ways, it helped his OCD. Well, great. I got to thank you so much thank you. for Thanks. inviting us here today. Thanks for thank liking so the book. Uh, the book is really, really good. Punk Rock Blitzkrieg. Pick it up. Marky Ramon, everybody.